Welcome back. In this lecture, we're going to do the next 10 questions of chemistry. Now, this is question 60 where we left, and let's start now. AKU 2009 paper. Methanol can be produced in a reaction with carbon monoxide and hydrogen, according to this equation, you can see this is an exothermic reaction. Which one of the following changes would occur when a catalyst is added to this equilibrium mixture? Catalyst never changes the position of the equilibrium. It only increases the rate of both forward as well as backward reactions. It favors both the reactions equally, but never shifts the position of the equilibrium. So the delta H value is unaffected by the catalyst. Mount doesn't increase because both forward and backward are equally affected. Temperatures, again, the rate of both forward and backward reaction would increase, that's the best answer. 61, this statement about the behavior of a catalyst in this reaction is correct. Catalyst lowers the activation energy of both the forward as well as the backward reactions, not just forward, not just backward. CC2, which change in the equilibrium below will result in the highest concentration of nitric oxide? Nitric oxide, we just need to shift the equilibrium to the right-hand side. You can see the forward reaction is endothermic reaction. If it's endothermic reaction, then that would mean increasing the temperature will shift the equilibrium to the right-hand side, right? A catalyst has no effect on the yield because it doesn't affect the position. Pressure uh, also doesn't have any effect because pressure depends on the number of gases moles that you have. You have, you've got two moles of gases over here and two moles of gases here. They are equal, so there, hence no pressure changes, no nothing. Uh, temperature increase, yes, that will affect it because it's endothermic. So it's going to shift it to the right side, increasing the nitric oxide concentration. What's oxidation reduction reaction? Which one is an oxidation as well as a, re a reduction reaction? Zinc is getting oxidized in this one, and uh, car uh, this carboxylic acid is getting oxidized as well. What about this one? Lead is going from zero to plus two, and this one is going from negative one to zero. So yep, this one seems to be an oxidation reduction reaction. Let's look at the other ones. Sulfuric acid, hydrogen, no change, sulfur, Essentially, no change. Carbon, no change. So option C seems to be the best answer here. Zinc gets oxidized here. Gives away its electrons. And uh, ethanoic acid gives away the hydrogen and gets oxidized. But what about this hydrogen? It goes from plus one. Wait a minute. There's a problem here. This is not zero. This is plus two, actually. This two plus is actually the charge. It's just a misprint here. So this one cannot be the answer because the lead is not changing its uh, oxidation number at all. So option D is the best because if you look at the zinc here, zinc is going from zero to plus two. What about the hydrogen? Hydrogen is going from plus one to zero. So it's getting reduced, getting reduced, and this one is getting oxidized. So yeah, option D is the best answer over here. 64, a sample of ammonia is play, placed in a sealed vessel and allowed to reach equilibrium using this graph. What's the value of K? K is a concentration constant. Equilibrium constant of concentration, and you can calculate it using product to the power of its moles. So nitrogen to the power of its moles into hydrogen to the power of its moles divided by reactants to the power of their moles. Right. So you add in the equilibrium concentrations only in, in these, this equation. Okay. So you've got 4.5 uh, cube multiplied by nitrogen, which is 1.5 upon ammonia, which is two times two, which is four basically. So essentially you multiply all of this stuff and you get an answer of 34. That's the answer. What refers to each single step in the reaction mechanism that's called an elementary step. This is what you will need to learn. 
okay, which substance when added to the reaction mechanism below will have the greatest effect on the overall rate. Always remember the rate determining step is the slowest step of the reaction and it's step two only. So step two, so if either you increase iodide or HOCl, will the rate change? So you have iodide in there, so option C. Then next, Question 67, the reaction below is allowed to reach equilibrium. If oxygen is added to the symbol, symptom, what is system, what is the effect on the value of carbon dioxide concentration and the value of K? Remember, the value of K only changes by the changes in temperature and does not have any effect based on the changes in the concentration. So K has to stay constant. But what about these two? If I increase oxygen here, it's going to react with carbon monoxide, shift the equilibrium to the right and increase the carbon dioxide carbon dioxide will increase, hence. 68, what is considered Arrhenius base? NaOH is the only Arrhenius base because it's gonna produce OH negative ions in aqueous solution. That's the definition of an Arrhenius base, which operationally defines as an acidic solution. pH 8 is acidic, but it's not an operational definition. Turns red, litmus red, and again, not all acids have a pH of eight. But turns litmus red, this is a property common to all acids, that, therefore this is the best answer. During the iteration experiment to determine the concentration of acetic acid, a student pipettes a sample of the acid into a flask that already had some base. So you will be actually adding in acetic acid, uh, uh, hoping that it's going to neutralize it. But then if you have some more base already sitting in there, you'll need more than the actual concentration of acetic acid, right? So this will have result amount of titrant, uh, titrant required will also be higher and the calculated concentration will also be higher, okay? So yeah, 67 is 70 is uh, actually a C. Wait, one second. You already have some base sitting in there and you are adding in more and more acid. So you'll require more than the actual quantity, right? And it... Guys, please note one thing. This is a pipette and not a burette. This is what I actually skipped here. This is a pipette. Because it's a pipette, it's actually the acid that you've added in this flask. So if there was some base already sitting here, it would neutralize some of that acid already before you could add in more base to it from a burette. Right. This is titration. Remember, titration required a burette as well. So because it uh, neutralizes some of the acid already, therefore, the acid over here is going to be lesser than the actual acid. Right. The quantity or the concentration is going to be lesser. So the amount of titrant required to neutralize it is also going to be lesser. Right. The amount of titrant required to neutralize it is going to be lesser. So now what about the calculated concentration? Will that be higher or lower? So because you require lesser concentration. The concentration will actually calculate the concentration because some quantity chahiye to neutralize the acid now because some of the acid has already been neutralized. So the calculated concentration will also going to be lesser. Yeah, lower. You can come quantity required thi na? Also neutralize neutralized. Just a quick recap of this entire thing. Take it. You took a pipette. You took some acid in it. Added it into a flask and the flask already had some base, so it's going to neutralize some of that acid. Because of that, the quantity of the acid is going to reduce. And so now you have lesser than the actual concentration of acetic acid in there. Now when you are adding in the base from a, bu a burette, lesser quantity of the burette would be required. Titrant would be required to neutralize it. And so the calculated concentration is also going to be lesser than simple as that. So option B is the answer. This marks the end of the 10 questions. Meet you guys in the next video with the next